Welcome to Mining the Gold. Scripture's truths are like nuggets of gold in a reserve. To be its best, gold must be mined, refined, and designed as bullion, coins, jewelry, and the like. To get the best from the truth of scripture, it too must be mined, refined, and designed. Mined as we apply it to our everyday situations. Refined as we recognize biblical precepts carry more weight than our cultural practices. And designed for us as family members, neighbors, members of the community at large, as we forge the relationship we get to enjoy with our God, I'm Denise Watts, author of Mining the Gold and your teaching host for today's session. Praise the Lord. I am Henry William Harris Jr. of Harris Transportation Services, LLC. Henry, thank you so much for joining us for today's session. My pleasure. And to you who are watching, we thank you for joining with us also as we look together in God's word. Today's lesson comes from chapter 11 of Mining the Gold, Living the Christ Life. And this is topic seven, being faithful in gathered worship. Our scripture is Luke 4, 16a, and we're using the New International Version. It reads simply, he, and that's Jesus, went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. For 10 years, I served as planter pastor of Lighthouse Christian Fellowship in LaGrange, Kentucky. And while I have loved church for all of my life, during those years, I grew a deeper appreciation of the work of God in and through the local congregation. I was keenly aware that God was taking us on a journey together, facilitated by the messages he led me to preach. He found us where we were and then brought us together to serve his cause in the place where we were. The same was true at the next place I served. From those vantage points, I could fully validate what had been a lifelong practice for me as a Christ follower, attending worship on a weekly basis at the church that was my home church. I knew the cliche approach that was popularized in talking about the prayer habit of Jesus. If Jesus, the son of God, felt the need to pray, shouldn't you and I recognize our need to pray? The same can be said of his weekly custom to attend worship at the local synagogue. I understood the concept of, if I consider myself to be a Christ follower, shouldn't I be mimicking the places he went and the things that he did? 
Christ followers offer healing to the sick, food for the hungry, love for the lonely, comfort for the brokenhearted, and so much more because we want to be like Jesus. Is it not only natural then that we should worship with God's people just as he did? I know the idea that I can worship God just fine at home or in the woods or at the beach or all by myself. But is that God's idea? Christ's great commission to his followers in Matthew 28, 19 to 20 is go, make disciples, baptize, and teach. That requires gathering. The Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost in Acts 2 when the believers were praying together in the upper room, a gathering. The early church described in Acts 2, 42 to 47, with these words, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Over and over in these words, we see the role of gathering in being the church. Paul went throughout Asia Minor, introducing people to Jesus as Lord and setting up churches for the believers to grow together, gatherings. The writer of Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, issued this challenge to the Hebrew Christians, according to the, according to the New International Version, it reads, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Gathering. Reflect again on the Acts 2, 42 to 47 description of the early church. Where can one person alone replicate the power and exert the influence of the Acts 2 church? Now, does this call to gather require massive buildings, pipe organs, praise bands, choirs, orchestras, bands, drama departments, media productions, and polished orations delivered by highly educated professionals? I dare to say a resounding no. When the New Testament refers to a synagogue, it refers to a gathering of 10 men at the very least. That format followed the transition from synagogue to church. Church was close by, often meeting in homes, but 
always larger than one single household. And yes, there were a few mega synagogues with capacity for hundreds, if not thousands. Can you experience worship alone in your prayer closet, in the woods, at the beach, or any other number of beautiful and not so beautiful settings? Of course. Is your practice of solitary worship ever intended to replace your weekly gathering with a local body of believers in order to grow in Christ and serve in his name, both individually and collectively? If I have to answer that now, I haven't done a very good job here. Go. Find your gathering and be there. All there. Weekly. That's today's mining of the gold of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. I really enjoyed that uh, that scenario that you read about um, how we ought to uh, come together and uh, meet to fellowship. Uh, I think it's very important that we do that so that we can grow in Christ uh, and also not only grow in Christ, but also be, a, uh, as the word tells us, to be a doer of the word and not just a hero of it, receiving our own selves. Uh, and so um, as he did go in, into Nazareth, uh, and part of his custom on the Sabbath day, he uh, did go into the synagogue to, to show us what we ought to be doing even now. Exactly. And, and you know what's so funny? One of the arguments against going into churches, you know, I, I don't want to be there with those people. There's a bunch of hypocrites there. There's a bunch of folks that's making up stuff there. Blah, 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 blah. But that is exactly what Jesus dealt with. And in fact, the worst of it was when he went to the temple, but he still went. And there he had to face the Pharisees who were so full of religious rules and regulations that God never required. And yet they had a total absence of love in their heart or of care for the people. Still, Christ went to the temple on the designated days to be there. Amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> and uh, funny you mention that because um, even today, uh, as you think about gathering in a quote unquote church, uh, as you read uh, about, does it take, you know, being in the choir? Um, having all types of, of uh, things to use, uh, praise and worship. It doesn't really take all that. It's just about gathering and worshiping God. Uh, even in our, our, our mouths as, as, as a instrument to praise God, to worship God, uh, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. We, we don't necessarily need musical instruments, um, although they do display our talents and our skill. Uh, but if we get too far into it, we lose focus on why we are gathering in the first place. And that is to hear a word from God and to be able to apply that word and to be able to love one another as Christ did. Because uh, definitely uh, God did come down to show us why he loved us. And because he showed us why he loved us, he came in the fullness of God and the fullness of man to show us the original intent that we were in. And that's to have an intimate relationship with God. Exactly. And to love each other. There's There are a couple of messages coming up in later chapters that are going to talk about the church and how it should be and all of that good stuff. And that are going to talk about even what was the order of worship like in the New Testament church. And how does it compare to us today? Mm. But most importantly, 
it's the work of the church. We don't need the props if we're not going to do the work. Amen. Amen. Let's do the work. So if I don't have time to be in the choir and be in Bible study, hmm, where should I be? It doesn't say they went to choir rehearsal every day. It said they studied the word. So I need to make my priorities the priorities of scripture. Well, we could go on. Amen to that. This is definitely one way of mining the gold. Looking at a scripture, looking around that scripture, looking at all these scriptures that we've had so far and coming up and, and establishing what they meant then so that we can understand how they apply now. And that's an important thing to do. But there is another way of mining the gold that we're going to do today. And that is mining the gold of creativity that God has placed within each one of us, which when we apply that creativity, we get to add value to people and in this dark and dangerous world, help them see glimpses of a life that is better and more beautiful because of Christ. And with that as our second goal, I am so pleased to have with us today, Henry Harris Jr. with Harris Transportation Services. Henry, welcome to Mining the Gold. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come and share about Harris Transportation Services, LLC. Uh, first of all, my name is Henry William Harris Jr. as I have been introduced in the beginning. And HCS LLC started in 2010 uh, with the desire to drive. A desire to drive, didn't know how deep I was going to go into the transportation industry, but I found the love to drive uh, and in ministry, uh, I found myself being able to uh, help those that were ministering the world to be their driver. Uh, and uh, that continued until 2014, uh, where I decided to go on the road and start my career as a commercial uh, driver. Uh, and with that experience, uh, being out there on the road, uh, learning how to maneuver a 80,000 pound vehicle that can be a bullet going 65 miles an hour, <laughs> uh, with 40,000, 40,000 pounds of freight in the box, uh, whether that's refrigerated or flatbed or dry van, uh, it doesn't matter. It's still 80,000 pound plus, uh, vehicle. Uh, my experience, uh, uh, taught me that I had to decide for myself what was best or how I was going to be able to be the best driver out there outside of what I was being trained by or who I was being trained by. And so uh, outside of that uh, experience, uh, I decided that Harris Transportation Services was birthed even more to have my own company and develop it so that I'd be the one to train uh, those that desire to get a license or a permit uh, and train them the way God has instructed me on how a driver should be on that road. What kind a of precious calling. I cannot imagine driving anything that big, much less that big and that heavy and that full of stuff that makes it more heavy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing um, because most people think that um, drivers that can drive commercially and that's even with a dump truck, uh, uh, a dump truck, a trash truck, a bus, for that even matter, 
uh, even with the you know type of buses that you have the long buses with the middle and the, with the uh, fifth wheel in the middle. And the only difference between that and a tractor trailer is that the fifth wheel is in the middle of the bus rather than at the front of the bus. <laughs> so um, you're still you're still driving a long vehicle that's seventy feet long uh, or more, and you still are dealing with freight. And anything that moves on the road is considered freight, even when you get in your car. <laughs> You're still driving freight because you're driving yourself as a freight. Uh, wherever you go from A to B. <laughs> That's how simple it is. Uh, but uh, most people don't see it that way. Uh, we think they think that you can get in a truck, get behind that wheel, keep it moving. Nope, don't work like that. Uh, it's a gradual process. And so we have developed uh, HL Access. Uh, we have developed HL Access, uh, which is our training uh, component of HTS to help those that desire a CDL permit as well as the license so that we are training those uh, that want to be on the road as a better driver than I am. What are the requirements for someone to enter into your training program? Well, the requirements is being open. Uh, that's what I desire. I desire anyone that desires that really wants to get that permit. They have to know that they are. First of all, let me back track. They have to know they're called to be to drive. Let me, let me just put it out there. Uh, they have to know that this is their calling because a lot of people just get out there thinking that it's all about the money. It ain't all about the money, you know. Uh, although that is a benefit for being out there, but it's not. It's not the number one thing. The number one thing is about safety. And if you can get out there and you can try to make the money all you want, but if you're not safe and something happens, you just destroy your whole, you basically destroy your whole career and your life. <laughs> because getting a CDL on an AMD level uh, is a higher requirement, just like being in the ministry when you're called to be an pastor, apostle, or even an evangelist is on a higher level, higher plane. And, uh, it's this open desire and willing to work uh, and put the effort in as far as studying, um, having a desire to, to drive uh, and putting the effort in uh, to, to go that route. So any licensed driver at any age can be trained to drive a truck? No, we prefer that, uh, well, now that regulations have um, changed where they're trying to uh, lower the age of 18, uh, but the actual age of actually getting a CDL is actually 21. And so that's what our requirements are. If you are 21 years of age and desire to get the CDL, A or B, uh, and the A is different from the B because it takes another level to the tractor trailer, but a B is in reference to buses, uh, dump trucks, uh, all those other kind of commercial vehicles uh, that you can drive on that level. And then the A is all those below and the director trailer uh, put together. Uh, and that's 80 pounds all above or 26 pounds, I should say, uh, combined vehicle plus or minus. <clears throat> so what's the, the most, let's see, what would be the most memorable student mm. experience that you can think of in your training career? My experience with training, uh, well, I was the favorite person I like, I, I trained, and that's my wife. <laughs> I actually trained my wife to be a driver. And um, <laughs> um, I was a little biased because I knew my wife can drive, <laughs> you know, can really drive. So um, I didn't cut no slack. Uh, I didn't cut the slack. And she'll tell you that herself. Uh, I didn't cut the slack. And I uh, basically, um, she uh, came out on the road when I was driving CDLB type of vehicle, which is a 26 footer. Uh, if you have ever saw a um, Panther truck or a FedEx critical type truck that has that FedEx symbol on the side of the truck, it's 26 footer. Uh, it's a sleeper on the front and then the box truck is 26 foot. Uh, that's the type of vehicle I was driving at the time. So I told her to come on the road with me uh, so that she could see what I do and see what I go through. And uh, show sure enough, um, <laughs> she could testify to this. Uh, I didn't cut her no slack. Um, 
after about maybe three days or maybe even four days, I think, because she'd probably say shorter, um, <laughs> I uh, decided, you know what? You're going to drive this truck. You need to drive this truck. Drive like you know how to drive. Okay, drive this truck. <laughs> and uh, after about four or five hours sitting up front, I went to the back and went to sleep. <laughs> that's how confident, but but see, that's how confident I was in her, in her ability. Uh, and, um, and knowing, knowing I was confident in her, but also having faith in God. And that's, and that's another key as well. You know, knowing that, that, that person is with you in that seat, in that driver's seat behind that wheel, it's actually that purpose of being behind it. Uh, and I know you asked me what was the best experience, but I also got to tell you the other side. Uh, and the reason why I mentioned about knowing your purpose is because there are some folks that come out there and, uh, they experience, they have background experience as far as driving a truck. But when they come, uh, I've had experience where people come from another country and yes, they had a CDL. Yes, they've been behind a truck. But when they come over to the U.S., they think that they can get inside of the truck and do what they do in another country. It don't work like that. <laughs> and unfortunately, I had two drivers that come in with me. And after about two and a half weeks, I was like, mm hmm. It's not for you, bro, <laughs> um, because you have, you know, when you come out there, you have a big head. Uh, you can get to that point where you're prideful and you don't want to listen. And isn't that ironic that uh, that we talked about the word earlier uh, and we talked about the Pharisees and some Sadducees. Well, we talked about the Pharisees. I thought about the Pharisees and Sadducees, where they are so bound up with regulations that they don't hold. They don't show any love. Well, you guys have the same kind of mindset when you're behind that wheel. You got to show love because you got to have love for that person that's going to cut you off, <laughs> going to go around you and make that left, that right turn, or left, left turn because you're moving slow. Um, so you got to have an open mind with that and, uh, and definitely got to have a love for it. So, uh, I, again, um, I had to tell the good and the bad <laughs> uh, in order to get a full understanding. Speaking of love, you have a regular license, a B and an A for commercial, right? No, you just actually, when you're actually going for a CDL license, you go from a regular uh, ninth, ninth CDL license, which is C or D, and you go straight to a B or A, whichever one you select. Okay. But my point is, you've done it all. Yes, that's correct. You understand what that driver of a car is thinking and feeling and dealing with for that yes. matter. That's correct. However, we car drivers in our minds, we know you're bigger than we are, but we still think you're just a car and we want to treat you like a car. <laughs> What can you tell our viewers today to help them realize that's not just a car? Ah, my Lord. Okay, so in the industry of trucking, we call those that drive smaller vehicles as four-wheelers. Any, any vehicle that has four wheels, we call them four-wheelers. And so as a four-wheeler, <laughs> and a truck driver, but as a four-wheeler, uh, you have to have an open mind that a tractor trailer, regardless of how far from you, when you're coming off a ramp or if you're merging or if you're turning left or right, uh, can actually, if I can be serious, can actually cause great harm to you if you're not careful. Uh, it's the same instance as if you're driving your own car and you decide to cut off another four-wheeler, make a left or right, or make it a merge, or even going from left lane to right lane, how you your travel. So it's the same concept, but you have to be aware that it's not just about you. And that's where, you know, when you come into HL Access uh, and you want to understand what it is about trucking and about the CDL uh, industry, we take you from A to Z. We don't just give you just about the CDL. We go all the way back to you driving because you got to go back to the basics. You can't just come into class and think that you got it all and you're a bag of chips and you can just get it out in a vehicle and just drive. It don't work like that. 
So you have to, we take you from A to Z. We go all the way back to when you got your license. So we remind you of signs, we remind you of how, uh, uh, distance, we remind you of the, the distance between one vehicle to another, we remind you how to turn left or right, we remind you of uh, distractions, anything that a four-wheeler does or, or has gone through to learn how to drive a four-wheel vehicle, we teach it in a tractor trailer. But it's amplified because you have a longer vehicle and you have a heavier vehicle. And one thing I can say uh, to make this a serious concept is that a truck or a bus or any other vehicle that's bigger than a four wheel does not stop on a dock. Meaning they cannot stop right away. It takes at least 10 seconds, perception, reaction, uh, distance, it takes all that, and that happens within a within a millisecond of anything can happen as far as an accident. That's why you have to have an open mind as a four wheeler, understanding that when you get in your vehicle and you decide to go from A to B, remember it's not about you, but it is about you. <laughs> How about that, it's not about you, but it's your fault. It's your responsibility. <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly my point. Yeah. One last question for today. Yes, um, are there automatic transmission semi trucks? As of actually, as of 2016 and going forward up to today, uh, there are few in between that most companies uh, that deal with CDL training train with automatic transmission. Now, that's not necessarily automatic transmissions as if you're getting in a car. Uh, it's, it's built a little different. Uh, the uh, gears selector is on the action on the steering wheel rather than on the side. Uh, you still have your key when you have to turn it on and start the engine and that type of thing. But for the most part, as of 2016, maybe 2015, uh, the industry changed where they uh, are have and require most companies that when they go to a truck maker, uh, those that make the trucks, that they're automatic. And there are some that still teach manual, but um, for the most part in the industry, uh, it's mostly automatic. Wow, I surprised myself. I didn't think that was the answer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Learn something new every day. Something new every day and something very important. But even with automatic transmission, as you said, it takes time to stop that big boy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially when you have freight in the box. Absolutely. Well, Henry, thank you so much for what you do. Not just as a driver yourself, but as in providing training for other drivers. May you travel always in safety. Yes, ma'am. Knowing the hand of God is with you. I do not take your job lightly. <laughs> you bet. I, I can't, I can always say I don't take mine lightly as well. The Mining the Gold podcast posts new episodes each Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m., that's Eastern Time, New York Time, if you're outside of the United States of America. And we invite you to join us. Certainly you can join us as we first appear, but join us whenever you can join us as you have just now. More than that, we ask you to like or follow us on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube so that you will get notifications each time we've posted. And then as you're browsing your Facebook, if you're like me, I check my notifications once a day just to see what has come to me that I might want to look at. Give us those moments of your time. But if you like what you're hearing, we also ask you to let the spirit guide you to people you know that might need to hear a specific episode. Maybe you were thinking today about someone who has said to you, 
You know, I wish I could drive a truck like that. If they're on Facebook, share this with them. Type their name in the comments and they will see on their feed that you have mentioned them in a post. Or just share it across the board. There's a share button, hit share, share it on your news feed. And I think it's post now. Everybody that's connected to you on Facebook and getting your post these days will see that you shared us. Help us get the word out about mining the gold. But mining the gold is more than a podcast. It's a book with 190 plus of these short messages to be read one a day. When you go through it all, you will have a systematic picture of what it is to love the God of scripture and to walk with him through Jesus Christ, his son, as your Lord. It has a companion book, Nuggets of Gold, which takes the same 190 plus topics in the same orders, same scriptures, only now you get the opportunity to reflect on those scriptures and their application. So you can literally ask yourself, how well am I appropriating this gift that God has given to me? There's a third book. It's called The Power of Our Relationships. And in that book, I call it my 30-day devotional, there are 15 devotional messages about each one about a different relationship that we can enjoy in this life. And then there are 15 sets of reflective questions about each relationship. So you can actually evaluate Am I getting the most out of my relationships? Am I making the most of my relationships? Or am I letting my relationships dominate me? Those three books can be found by um, scanning this QR code right here. That QR code will take you to bit.ly Denise Books where all the books are available, or you can find them on amazon.com. I'd love to hear from you. My email is dwattswilson at gmail.com. You email me questions, comments, thoughts, ideas. I will read your email and I will answer it. I'm not doing well enough yet to hire a personal secretary. But most importantly, I ask you to go ahead and scan this whole page, screenshot it, so that you have the information about the podcast, the books, and me. But most importantly, today, you will have the information for Henry W. Harris Jr., today's co-host. He is with, he is the owner of Harris Transportation Services, LLC. The website is www.hlaccesscareers.com. The email is htsllc1151 at gmail.com. But like I said, screenshot it. Put this someplace where you can find it when you most want to use it. Henry, Thank you so much for who you are and for sharing yourself with us today on Mining the Gold. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. I also want to thank my grandson, Grayson, who composed the music for Mining the Gold. And thank you for sharing these precious moments of your time with us as we look at the gold in God's word and the gold in God's people. I surely hope we'll see much more of you. Thank you for being here.